It's important to have some sort of online presence for your students, especially if you're flipping, because that means that half of your materials, all your lectures are gonna be online for students to watch. So there needs to be an online home site where students are able to go to watch these. We're gonna set up a Weebly website right now and I'm gonna walk you through some of the really cool features of a Weebly website. Okay, so if you type in uh, weebly.com, you're gonna come up to this uh, sign up website. You can sign up for free, so go ahead and just put in your name and your CCISD email or your personal email, it doesn't matter. It's just easier to remember if you stick with the same email. And then hit get started. And then I always click, it's gonna ask you what's the focus of your site and so just click site. And then you get to choose a theme. It doesn't matter. There's a million themes that you can choose from. So I'm not going to walk you through all of, the, all of the options right now because there's too many to go through. But you choose a, a theme that you like. You can choose a color, uh, maybe your school colors. I'm going to click maroon because of Go Wildcats. And then hit choose. Okay, and then it's going to show you um, a couple options on choosing your website domain. Click use a subdomain of Weebly.com. That's the free option. Your, that just means that your URL, your like website, um, is going to say .weebly.com. So I'm going to name this Millsap Kim. So my name and then my subject, .weebly.com. And that's what my students are going to go to every time they want to access um, my site. So I hit continue. So go ahead and X out of this. This is just like an intro video if you want to watch it. I'm going to X out of it. This is going to be your home site uh, that you're going to see every time that you're going to be uploading uh, or changing anything on your website. This is like your building page, okay? So as you can see, this, this tab is uh, colored red and in indicating that this is the home page. Um, and the home page can look a couple different ways. If, if you go to the picture on your site, you're going to see this little... Um, like settings uh, button. If you click the settings button, there's always four options for a page. You can have um, a big picture at the front of the page with no words. You can have a short picture with no words. You can have no header, meaning that there's no photo at all. Or you can have a landing page. I usually have a landing page as my home page um, just because it's kind of cool. A landing page allows you to have a picture, allows you to have words, and it allows you to have a button link. So you can see over here this button text that we can actually make it a link to go somewhere, wherever, I don't know, you want it to go. So um, you can kind of, you know, change this up however you want. And then uh, anything, any words here you can see, you can click and you can um, start typing. There's options on this little bar for your text. You can make it bold, italicized. The plus and minus can make your text bigger or smaller. The A underline can change the color of your text. Next, look at the button link. If you have a landing page, um, then you have a button link. And button links are like the coolest things I've ever seen um, because you can take this button and you can make it link to anything you want it to link to. So let's say I have a YouTube channel and I want my students to be able to go click to my YouTube channel uh, at the very front of the home page. Um, and so you can change the button style. Uh, you can change it different colors. You can make it bigger, smaller, whatever. Um, and then you click the link. The link um, allows you to make this little button go really anywhere you want. You can make it go to a website like youtube.com slash the done classroom, which is where my YouTube channel is. You can click to have it open in a new window. Um, you can make it click and go to a certain page on your website. And I'll show you how to add pages later. But let's say um, I don't want it to go to a website, I want it to go to my contact page. Then you can click contact and it will take you to the contact page of the website. You also can link it to a file. You can upload an actual file here, like a set of notes, and that button will take them to that set of notes. Or you can link it to an email address. So let's say, for example, I want it to link to my contact page. Uh, then I might want to change the words on here to say contact. Okay. And so now any time a student clicks this, it will take them to my contact page. Okay, on every page the, near the bottom of the page, you're going to see a section that says drag elements here. That is essentially your whiteboard for creating your website. You can create your website from scratch by using blocks and moving blocks to fill up this space. 
All the blocks that you can use are going to be over here on your left hand side. There's a bunch of different types of blocks. There's the, your basic blocks, which is your text options and your photo options. Um, then the next section, if you scroll down, there's a little scroll guy. So if you, if you roll, scroll them down, you see structure. There's a bunch of other buttons that you can put in. Um, and then scroll down, there's media buttons you can put in. And then lastly, uh, there's a couple little extra buttons you can put in. And I'm going to walk you through some of these. Um, some of the ones that I think are like the coolest options. So let's say if this is the home page, I want to have a title on my home page. So you can take these boxes, and as you can see, you can drag them and move them around. Um, the blue line shows you where this box is going to land. So if I let go of this box, it's going to take the entire top part of this page. So I'm letting go of it. And as you can see, this box is now taken the whole top part of this page. If I click it, here are my options for how I want to draw my text. If I want my text to be centered, I can do that. So let's say I want all my announcements to be at the beginning of this page. So the title is usually for like bigger, bolder words. Let's say under this, I want to actually write down some text, some daily announcements. You can take the text box, click it, and drag. And I'll show you a couple different places you can put the text. If you want the text right underneath the title, you can let go right now. And the blue line tells us the text is going to go underneath the announcements. You can also put the, the text above the announcements. Or you can move it to the side, and it will push the title to the right. Or I can move my text to this side, and it will push my title to the left. Um, this allows you to create different columns in your website which is kind of neat. So here's my text. And with my text, let's say I want to make a bullet point and say, you know, to do, or let's say I want to say Monday's announcements. Okay. And so I can type in my Monday's announcements. Each day I can come in here and I can type a bullet point list of things to do, blah, blah, blah. And then my students can read these as they, as they come into class. So you can have an announcements if you want an announcements page. This is um, under structure, under the divider, you can see it says button. This is a way to add more links to your web page. You can click and drag the button and move it. And now you can add a link um, to a, either a web page or a document or anything you want right there. Now I want to show you how you can um, edit your pages. So right now we're under build. If you go to design, you can change the theme of your website. Um, if you go to pages, you can add more web pages or you can delete pages. So here's your about page. If you wanted to edit it, you would just hit save and edit and it will take you to that page and then you can work on it. As you can see here, you can change the layout, remember, of whether you have a big picture, a small picture, or a landing page. You can also change the name right here. If I want to add a page, it's going to automatically add the page. Oh, by the way, I always hit standard. It's going to add the page to the bottom, meaning that like if you went to your home page, it says home, about, contact, then the next like little button is going to appear and that's this next new page. If you don't want this, this page to appear on your site, um, you can click this and it will hide it from the navigation menu. If you want this page to appear after you click on one of these, let's say if, I, if you hover over home, you want a drop down list of pages, then you can t click the page, move it, and then slide it inward. This means this new page is now going to pop up whenever someone hovers over the home button. So that's the way I set up my website is I have all my units um, underneath my home so when they hover over home they'll see all the units. Um, and then you click uh, your option for the page layout. I don't want to hide this. If you hit save and edit you're going to see this unit page pop up. So here's the unit page. I can now drag elements here to edit it. As you can see, the unit one does not appear on the navigation menu, but if I hover over home, here's my unit one. If I wanted unit one to pop up here, um, then I would just go back to pages. I would grab unit one. I would slide it inward like this so that it was visible from the navigation menu. Let's go ahead and click on the contact page. I want to show you some other, a couple other cool features you can do with the Weebly. Here's the contact page. If I scroll down to the drag elements area, 
Um, one element you're going to want to add to your Weebly site is a contact form. And you can see this block right here. To grab the block and move it over to the middle and release your clicker. Weebly has a bunch of different forms that you can insert into your Weebly site. This is just an example of one type of form. Uh, if you want to edit the form, just click the words. And you can edit it, edit the text right up here. So this is, I'm going to call this contact form. Uh, this is for teachers or parents, or not teachers, sorry. This is for students and parents who want to contact me and have questions. I can click form options, and it gives me a bunch of options about the form. The coolest thing about forms is that you can, you can specify what email you want these forms to be sent to. So I always make it my CCISD email. Students who have a question, they can fill out their name, they can write a comment, they can hit submit, and it basically is an email directly to me. You can specify what is in your form um, by just hovering over the certain sections and it will get highlighted with the blue box. And if I don't want my students to input their email, since not all my students have an email, I can hit delete. And if you look over to the left, all of a sudden I have a completely different set of blocks. These blocks are specifically form blocks. So if I wanted my students to fill in a form uh, that had questions um, or a drop down box or a short text box, I can add these into my form for, and then I can click on this and I can edit the words that come up inside of these. Okay, You can make it required by clicking yes or not required by clicking no. You'll know it's required because there'll be like a little asterisk right here. So these forms, the cool thing about the forms is that um, you can view the entries on the forms. You can view everything that has been written inside of these forms and submitted on this website. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is um, if you would click over to the bar on the right hand side, click My Sites, and it's going to take you to your home page. This is the home, this is the type of page you're going to see every single time you log into Weebly. Okay. If you click the edit button, it will take you back to the building page, which is the one that we were on uh, earlier. If you click more, you're going to see uh, there's an option called, uh, if you want to look at all the form entries, you can click this. And I had, didn't add a form to this website, but you can click the form entries and you can see all of the form. So how exactly do you import your MP4 file onto this website? There's a couple different ways. One thing you can do is you can directly grab the button, you can drop it, click button text, and then title the text whatever the title of your video is. So I'm going to just write video one, okay? And then hit the link. And this is where you're going to copy and paste the share link you got from your Google Drive. So here's Google Drive. And if I just copy this and go back to my Weebly site, all I do is paste it. And I usually click open the link in a new window and hit save. And now students can click on this and it's going to take them directly to the video. Let's say I want to um, import a document, like notes that I want my students to download. And this is, this is for Word files and PowerPoints, not for videos. So you can grab the block that says doc file. And this is how I embed all of my notes onto my Weebly website. Um, then you're going to click the click here button. And then you hit upload new file. And then you can just upload a file directly from your computer. So let me show you how that looks on my website. Let's go to one of my units, um, unit five. Um, and then these are all buttons to videos um, that are on Google Drive. So if you click on this, Chem Tutorial 5.1, um, notice, see how it's taking you to uh, Google Docs right here? And then it takes you to, to my video. So the, my students can click the um, play button here and they can watch my video. But for some reason, um, if like the internet's really slow or they're having difficulty watching it for some reason because everyone's online, they can click this um, downward arrow and it allows them to download the file onto their latitude. And this has been invaluable in my classroom. Um, this is another unit page. This is a, my unit on thermodynamics. And um, you, as you can see, my video links are on the left. 
Um, but in the middle, I put those those files that my students can download, which which are the no the notes that go with each of the videos. So that's really great. They can just click on those and it will immediately download to their latitude. Um, this button right here I've used to actually connect to a different page that I made. It's like a secret page on the on the Weebly. Um, it doesn't show up on my navigation. Um, I click the little X over the eyeball so that it doesn't show up. Um, but I did link it through this button so my students can come down here and they can, I inserted a photograph of my calendar so they can see that. And then I also have a to-do list for them. So um, there's a lot of really cool options that you can uh, do with Weebly. Um, I did, if you click on a, or like giveaflipweebly.com and you go to uh, where or how can I host my videos, I have um, a couple links. Uh, that might help you guys get started on some of this stuff. So I have a link to the beginner's guide to Weebly, the first steps. There's a video tutorial that you can watch. And then there's also some like paragraphs on like how to get started. And then this link will tell, take you to a bunch of different tutorials on using Google Documents. So I hope this was helpful for you guys in starting your first website and using Google Docs to host your actual physical copies of your videos. And we're now gonna move on to how do you keep students accountable?